What's up guys, it's been a little bit since I've made a video. The only things I've really been posting are Nerd Chat Saturdays. If you guys haven't had a chance to check those videos out, go ahead and take a look at my channel and, and check them out, they're pretty cool. Anyway, so most recently I've been studying for my AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam and I wanted to make a video on some of the stuff that I've learned just as I've been going through the process and, and through one of my courses. So one of the things on AWS uh, you can do is create roles and roles are actually a more secure method of accessing, for example, EC2 instances uh, with administrative access. The reason being is because AWS has, if you access it using your secret access key and your access key, it stores those credentials in a hidden file in AWS. So let me just get right into it and, and show you what I'm talking about. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to create a user. So we're gonna go to services, IAM, identity and access management. Go to users. So we're just going to call this user EC2 user1. And we're only going to give it programmatic access, meaning that it can only access AWS through, uh, like for example right here, a command line interface, SDK, other development tools. They're not going to be able to actually go online and access it uh, through the AWS management console. So we want to add them to a group and for the sake of the video, we'll let's go ahead and create a group while we're at it and we're going to call this admins and we are going to give them administrative access. So that is going to give our user administrative access because we are assigning it to that group. Uh, we don't need to add any tags and we're going to create the user. And always remember when you create your user, it's going to give you the programmatic access key ID and secret access key. This is the only time that they're going to give it to you, so you have to save it right away. You can download the CSV file and then make sure you do that before you close it. If you do happen to forget and you didn't download it, you can always go in oh, Sorry. to that user, go to security credentials. You can make that access key inactive and simply create a new one and then you have another option to download it. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and create an EC2 instance. And you'll see I don't have any instances running at this time, so we're just going to quick make a simple instance right now. Uh, we'll go with Amazon Linux 2. Uh, T2 Micro for the sake of it being eligible eligible for the free tier and uh, We're not even gonna mess with any of this a lot of this is some really cool stuff I want to make another video right here. You can do bootstrap scripting, which was a lot of fun um, But let's just go to add storage again We'll just leave everything as it is add tags and it's good to add tags so you don't get too confused about your different EC2 instances, so we're gonna put name um, EC2, we're going to be using the, C, the command line interface, so CLI. Uh, next, configure security groups. Uh, again, for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and just make a security group. Uh, we'll call this one SSH EC2. And we will give it port 22 access uh, from anywhere. And looks good. So we'll go ahead and launch it. We'll create a new key pair. This is just assuming that you haven't done any of this stuff yet. Um, key pair. Again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going through this real quick so I can get to the point of the video. So we'll go ahead and end. launch. My user key pair and launch the instance. Okay, so if we go over and view our instances, sometimes it takes a second for it to get running.
There we go. And now what we can do here is you can actually connect in and secure shell in through a browser-based connection here. Um, you can actually do this from any command line. So what I like to do is use uh, Google's secure shell extension. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to copy the IPv4 public address. It's EC2 user, and we're just going to paste in the IP address and connect. Okay, doesn't seem to be working. Let's try this one more time. Oh, there's the issue. My key pair, uh, I'm gonna have to import the key pair. Was my user key pair. Now we have it on file. Everything looks good. There we go. So now we are in the AWS command line interface. So let's start by getting root access. And from here, we can actually, so AWS is actually, they keep their commands pretty simple. You just type in AWS and then the service, uh, for example, S3, and then you can go from there. So if you do AWS S3 LS, you'd be able to list your S3 buckets. Right here it says unable to locate credentials. You can configure credentials by running AWS configure. So let's go ahead and run that. And what it's going to ask you to do is enter the access key. And so we get the access key that we created when we created our user. And the secret access key. Uh, let's just go with US East 1. And now we should have access. So if we again type in S3, or no, AWS S3 LS, it should list the buckets that I have. There we go. It shows all my S3 buckets that I have on my AWS account. So while we're in here, we can. it's actually pretty cool. You can do everything that you can do on the console pretty much on the AWS command line. For example, AWS S3, uh, MB is to make a bucket. And then from here you could just, remember S3 buckets have to be a unique name because it actually does make like a, a, a website with it. So you just type in anything random. And it should have made the bucket, right? So then we can do AWS S3 LS and it made that random bucket that I just did now. Anyway, so what we wanna do now, so now that we, you can see that we have administrative access because we're able to create buckets because we entered in our credentials. So if you go to the home directory and you list there's nothing here right but there is a hidden file so if you do cd aws you can see we have config and credentials and i mean it's a hidden file but if you know about it it's not very hidden so if you type in credentials oh sorry cd or no we can view the credentials that we typed in. So AWS suggests that we don't 
have uh, hard-coded uh, credentials or anything like that, like don't enter them on GitHub. So what we wanna do in, like as a more secure way of accessing and keeping these is to use roles. Say for example, somehow somebody was able to gain access to this EC2 instance, all they really have to do is go to the home directory, access the hidden file that's, I mean the hidden directory that's not really hidden. Again, if you know about it, you know about it. So there's nothing to hide and they can get the, our secret access key and access ID. With that, they can access other EC2 instances. They can actually use this in another uh, uh, command line interface, pretty much to cause a lot of damage. They can use uh, hacking tools, for example, Paku, and that's not what we want. So here, let's go back. And what we're gonna do is we're going to delete that file. So let's go back and then rm minus rf. Okay, so now if we search for this file, is there's no such directory. And so we've successfully deleted the hidden file, right? And on top of that, if we try now to make a bucket or list the, we can't see it anymore. And the reason that we can no longer see it is because we deleted the credentials, so it no longer has administrative access. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our AWS console, and we're gonna create a role. And to create a role, we have to go to Identity and Access Management. Roles. And let's create a new role. This role is going to be for an EC2 instance, right? So let's set permissions on that. And for this role, again, we want administrative access permissions. So we can just call this role admin access Okay, and we need to assign this role to our EC2 instance that uh, we are actually SSH into right here. So again, one more time, like if you wanna take a look, you type in AWS S3 LS, it says that there are no credentials, that's because we just deleted them. So if we go into our running instance, Go to instance settings, attach or replace an IAM role. We can then attach the role that we just created, our admin access role. And it's that simple. And what's really cool about AWS is how fast it acts. So now if we type in AWS S3 LS, there it goes, listing all of our buckets. So because of the role, this EC2 instance has administrative access. And if we try to take a look at here, if we go to the home directory, there still is no such file directory that contains our credentials. So by using roles, we're able to have administrative access or whatever access that we provide. It's also a lot easier to use because instead of going through every single instance and changing credentials, say we need to change something, we can just go to the role itself and that that's one role can apply to many different EC2 instances. And again, it's a lot better to not have it. Say by some chance somebody accesses your EC2 instance, it's really easy for them to get a hold of your credentials and with those credentials, they can do a lot of damage. So yeah, as something that I learned, something I wanted to show you guys, uh, what I'm learning now is a lot of uh, bash scripting and bootstrap scripting. That's, uh, I'm actually having a lot of fun doing that, so I think my next video is going to cover that. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget to click subscribe and, and like this video. So, thank you.